Okay, so in today's video we're going to have a look at iterations. Now I've got some language we need to understand with these questions and we're going to, have to discuss all of that, but grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes on these. We've got a few questions to have a look at. Now this little bit of language here, uh, xn plus 1, just means in very simple terms to find the next solution, okay? And that's what we use iteration for, to find estimates to a solution to an equation. So to find the next solution. Okay, so I'm going to be using that language throughout the video, but that just means to find the next solution. So if you can change your mind on, on what you think that that actually, you know, represents there with, with the little n plus 1, just think of it as to find the next solution. Now the next thing we have to do is think about, obviously, what this little n here means, and that just means the current solution. Okay, the current number that we're going to be using, or the current solution. Okay, there we go. So to find the next solution, you do 5 divided by the current solution squared, add 3. I'm going to type this all into a calculator. And it gives us a starting number, and it says here x naught, and that just means our starting number. There we go, so starting number. And it says the starting number that we're going to use equals 1. So all we actually have to do is sub 1 into this um, iterative formula. So what we're going to do is write down our first solution. It says find the values of or find the values of x1, x2, x3, which are just the first three estimated solutions. So to find the first estimated solution, which we'll call x1, we do 5 divided by the current number, or the current solution, which is our starting number at this point, which is 1. So 1 squared, add 3. And when we work that out, we get 5 over 4. Okay, 1 squared add 3, just typing that into your calculator. So type that all in, use your fraction button. Again, obviously this is much easier if you are using a Casio calculator. Your fraction button here is three buttons down from the top left. And it looks like this with the top one shaded in. Okay, so obviously it's much, much easier. I have linked in the description below the calculator that I'm using, and also another calculator that I like as well, but the one I'm using is the first in the description. The one I use on a daily basis is the second in there. But I would recommend you get in a Casio calculator, and again, I've linked them below so you can have a look, and you know, if you know anyone that has one, obviously, do have a go at using theirs. But there is our first solution. Now, with that typed in on your calculator, it's on my screen right now, I've got five over one squared plus three. I've pressed equals and I've got five quarters on my calculator screen. Now we're going to find x2. Now our current solution is 5 over 4. So I'm not going to use 1 anymore because we just keep getting the same answer. But instead I'm going to put 5 over 4 in place of this 1 here that we put in to start with. So 5 over 4. I'm going to put that in a bracket squared plus 1. Sorry, plus 3. Okay, and if we type that in, and I am gonna do a little trick here, rather than typing in five quarters in this little place here, I'm actually just gonna use my answer button. So I'm just gonna delete the one, and I'm just gonna press the answer button. I'm gonna be doing that throughout the video. Okay, and all that's gonna do is that's gonna put this last answer on my calculator screen, this five quarters in for me. So press equals, it does it all for you. And again, it gives you a horrible decimal, but it does actually come out as a fraction. It comes out as 80 over 73. Okay, so that is x2 there, finding our third solution. Let's just highlight that so we can see where it is. There we go. And now we're going to find x3, our final solution. And that's the number that we're going to use there in x3, our, our working out of x3. So to find that, we are going to do 5 over, again, the current number squared. So I'm just going to use the answer button again. So on my calculator it says answer squared plus five, plus three again, sorry. There we go. And easy enough at this point, I can just press equals again and it will reuse my current answer that's on the screen at the moment. So just make sure you don't clear anything off your screen, just keep it there, press equals, and there we go. And it gives me a decimal answer for this one, no fraction this time, it gives me 1.19. Lots of decimals, so it doesn't say to round it, so I'll write it all down, 0.199669. There we go, and that was our final answer there, x3. So these are estimates to the solutions of an equation. That's what we use iteration for, to find estimates to the solutions. Uh, and obviously, these are our three. So we've got x1, x2, x3. Write them down nice and clearly. Don't round them. Um, it's fine to write them as fractions, but definitely don't round them. Okay. So we're going to have a look at another question, and here it is. Okay, so a very similar question here. So I'm going to use my language that I wrote down on the previous one. So to find the next solution, we do 5 divided by the current number squared and then add 2 at the end. Okay, and it says our starting number this time is negative 2.5. Now you don't always have negatives in here, but I thought it was good to just to include this one because if we actually start to find x1 here, and again just typing it on your calculator, we'll have 5 
over negative 2.5 squared, and I've put this one in here because whenever you put a negative number in your calculator, particularly when you're squaring it, you need to make sure that you put it in a bracket and put your little squared on the outside. Okay, the reason for that is your calculator will obviously do your uh, powers before it will do the, the negative there or the takeaway, uh, as your calculator will read it, and it will give you a negative number. And we know a negative number squared is going to form a positive number, so you just need to make sure you put it in a bracket there. And that's good practice for any negative numbers on a calculator. Just always just stick them in a bracket and you can never go wrong. And once you've got all that on your screen, you're just going to press plus two, obviously come out of your fraction. You don't want that going into the denominator there. So make sure it's adding two on the outside of the fraction. So fraction button, 5 on the top, brackets, negative 2.5 in brackets squared, and then come out of the fraction and press plus 2. Press equals, and we get the first solution, or the estimate to the solution here, which is 14 over 5. And again, I don't need to write it as a decimal, you can do it if you want, but I'm just going to leave it as a fraction, 14 over 5. So that's our current solution, so to find x2 for our next one. I'm going to do 5 over, and I'm just going to go back into the calculator. I'm going to delete negative 2.5, press the answer button, and it's going to sub that in for me. Now, I've still got the brackets in there because I haven't deleted them, so I'm going to leave it in brackets. So it says answer, squared, plus 2, and that's what I'm reading on my calculator screen right now. Press equals, and it gives us another nasty fraction or a horrible decimal. I'm going to write down the fraction, which comes out as 517 over 196 and that's our second estimate to the solution there again if you're not if you have if not if you're doing this without a calculator that just shows you fractions it does come out as a decimal it's like 2.6377551102 or beyond if your calculator goes beyond those digits but there's our second estimate to the solution obviously very simple here when we do have one of these calculators and our final one x3 exactly the same process again. I don't even have to type anything more into my calculator. I just press equals again, because it just says five over answer squared. There we go, answer squared, plus two on the outside. I just literally just press equals again and just write down the digits there. And again, it's not come out as a fraction for my final number here. It's come out as 2.7186222914. Okay, and that is x3 there, uh, obviously just making sure that they're all nice and clear. So x1 was 14 over 5, x2 was 517 over 196, and our final answer there came out as this decimal. And just make sure you write down all the digits on your calculator screen. Don't be tempted to round it or shorten it down. Okay, just leave it exactly as it is there unless you are asked to give it to a certain amount of decimal places. Okay, so that's that. Uh, here's some for you to have a go at. So there's two questions there, so pause the video, have a go, see what you get, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, let's have a look at these then. So the first one, typing this straight into your calculator. So let's find next one. And we have three plus nine over the current number, which is three, so three squared. Okay, and I'm gonna show the working out for this one, obviously, just to make sure that I show that I have subbed that three in. So three plus nine over three squared, three squared is nine, so that comes out as four, quite a nice number there to start with. So X1 is four. X2, we're gonna sub four in. So we get three plus nine over four squared. And again, I can probably just type that in rather than typing the answer, but I'm gonna push the answer button in there, even though it's easy enough to type four in. And that gives us 57 over 16, and there's x2. And then particularly now, I'm gonna to wanna to use the answer button, so I'm just gonna press equals again. I'm not gonna write it all down again, but when I press equals for the last time, we get 1,339 divided by 361. And again, you can write that as a decimal as you want. It's, if you want, it's 3.709141274. But we can just leave that as a fraction, okay? Obviously, if it asks us to write it as a decimal, we can. But if it comes out as a fraction on our calculator, you're absolutely fine just to leave it like that. Okay, and obviously, just make sure your answers are nice and clear. Okay, x1 was 4, x2 was 57 over 16, and x3 was your 1339 over 361. Okay, moving on to the next one. So to find the next number or the next solution, one over the current number squared, add one, and it says start with two. So to find x1, we're gonna do one over two squared, and then add one. And let's just type that in. We could probably work that out without typing it in, but we'll type it in because it's gonna save us time on the next step. Add one, and that gives us five quarters, or 1.25, okay? So I'm just gonna write that down as a decimal this time, 1.25, it's not, not really too much stress to write that down. Then, over, then for x2, we've got one over, and it'd be 1.25 squared, but again, I'm just gonna use the answer button. So answer squared, 
add one. So back into my calculator, delete the two, obviously careful not to delete the power, which I have just done. So you have to type that in again, just don't clear your screen. So answer squared button again. There we go, we get 41 over 25 or 1.64. Again, you can just leave it as a fraction if you want, but it doesn't really matter. And now onto X3, press equals for the last time. You get a horrible fraction now or a horrible decimal. And it's 1.3718 eight zero two four nine nine or again just leave it as the fraction which came out as two thousand three hundred and six divided by one thousand six hundred and eighty one okay so I've left this one as decimals this time again just to show you it doesn't really matter either way but there we go there is our x1 x2 and x3 using an iteration formula let's have a look at the next bit Okay, so looking at this question, we've got two parts. So the first part says, show that the equation 2x cubed minus x squared minus 3 equals 0 has a solution between 1 and 2, x equals 1, x equals 2. What that means is that there is a number between 1 and 2 that would sub into this equation to give us the answer 0. So if we look at how we can actually show that it must be between 1 and 0, we could just go about subbing these numbers in. So if we sub x equals 1 in to start with, let's have a look at what we get. So if we sub x equals 1 in, we get two lots of 1 cubed, or 2 times 1 cubed. Take away 1 squared, x squared, and then take away 3. And if you sub that all in, you get the answer negative 2, which is obviously less than 0. Now if we sub in the next one, if we sub in x equals 2, and see what we get. Let's have a look. And you just type this straight into the calculator. You get 2 times 2 cubed this time. Take away x squared, so take away 2 squared. Take away... Three. Let's have a look, and that's going to give us, let's type that in, 2 times 2 cubed, take away 2 squared, take away 3, and it gives us the answer 9. There we go. So we've got two answers there. When we put 1 in, we get negative 2, and that's obviously less than 0, so that's too low. And when we sub in x equals 2, we get a number which is bigger than 0, we get 9, and that is too high. There we go. So. 1 is too low, 1 is too high, and therefore it must be in between. There we go, it must be in between. There we go, so therefore it must be in between. If we have a look at the second part of this, it says starting with x0 equals 1, use the iteration formula, and it gives us this formula here, twice to find an estimate for the solution to the equation that was given to us above. Now you might have another part in here as well, you might actually be asked to show how that equation can be rearranged to this iteration formula. Now, I'm not going to go over that in this video, it's more about rearrangement there, but just thinking about how we can actually do that, you just have to look at these equations, and the original equation up here has an x cubed in, and the one down here doesn't have a cubed or a squared in. So we need to have a look at how we could actually go about that. Now first things first, that's a negative 3 on the left of that one, and it's a positive 3 on the right of this one. Uh, now you don't actually have to do that to answer this particular question, but if we did have to rearrange it, first things first, we would have to add the 3 over. So let's have a look, we get 2x cubed minus x squared uh, equals 3. Now if you have a look, there's no x squared here in our iteration formula, there's no x cubed, so I'm going to have to factorise what's on the left there, and you can factorise it by x squared, and you get x squared equals 2x minus 1, sorry, I've actually just messed that up there, that's not factorising at all, is it? Factorising it, putting it into a bracket, and we get 2x minus 1 equals 3, and then you could actually rearrange it so we can divide both sides by 2x minus 1, and you get x squared equals 3 over 2x minus 1, and then you can square root both sides to get to our iteration formula up there. So there you go, you could square root that for x and square root this, and that's what gives us our iteration formula. Now, I'm just talking about that because that's how these iteration formulas are actually formed, they make one of the x's the subject. So in this case, we've got x as the subject, we've got x equals the square root of 3 over 3 over 2x minus 1, and that's how this iteration formula over there is actually formed. And sometimes you might actually have to show that, but we're just going to focus on actually using it. But I thought it was worth showing you there how these are actually created and how it relates to the equation up there. So if we have a look at just following our normal process here, it says our starting number's 1, and it says to use it twice. Or in other words, it wants us to find x1 and x2. So in order to find x1, all we have to do is sub that number in, so sub 1 in, and we get the square root of 3 over 2 lots of x, or 2 times 1, take away 1. Okay, 
and type that in there, three lots of, let's press the square root button first, so three on the top and on the bottom, two times one and then take away one. Press equals and you get the square root of three, which you can write down as the big long decimal, it's 1.73205, so on and so on, but it's the square root of three as our first solution. And if we put our next one in, so this time we're gonna be putting the square root of three in, so let's actually just write that in. So we get the square root of three on the top, two times the square root of three on the bottom, and you can just put answer in, put two times root three, minus one. I'm just gonna go back into my calculator, I'm gonna delete the one, I'm gonna press the answer button rather than typing in the square root of three, press equals, and again we get a decimal this time, we get 1.103. 395 and then 785 and again just writing down all the decimals. There we go, so we found x2, we've used the formula twice to get an estimate to our solution there. Okay, so lots going on in that question. You've got showing that an equation has a solution between two numbers. Nice and easy though to sub them both in, show that it's in between the two answers at the end, so negative two and nine, it was between them. And then obviously using the iteration formula there, just like we did before, and just making sure you type it all in and write all your working out down. Okay, but obviously didn't ask you, ask you to rearrange it in this question, but you could actually be asked to rearrange it. You've just got to take your time and have a think about how you could potentially rearrange it. And, and particularly in this question here, we've got to factorize at this stage here. That made it very quite, very, very quite difficult in this particular question. But here's one for you to have a go at. So pause the video there, here's your question, we'll go over the answers in a sec. Right, so first things first, showing that this equation has a solution between zero and one. So when x is zero, if we sub that in, what do we get? We get zero cubed plus four times zero squared, and that equals zero cubed is zero, add four times zero is another zero, so it all equals zero, and you can just type that into the calculator, and that's obviously lower than one, it says it equals one this time. So zero is lower than one, let's have a look at what happens when we put one in. So when x is one, we get one cubed, add four times one squared, and when you type that into your calculator or work it out without it, you get the answer five. So there we go, zero is below one, so that's too low, and five is too high, there we go, and therefore the solution must be in between. Okay. There we go, must be in between. Moving on to the next part, so starting with x0 equals zero, use the iteration formula, and it gives us our formula twice to find an estimate to the solution to this equation. So for x1, we're gonna sub in x equals zero. So subbing that in, we get one minus zero cubed divided by four, which is one minus zero, so it's just one over four, it just comes out as a quarter. But again, you can type that into your calculator. In fact, I am gonna type it in because I wanna use that quarter, but I'm actually just gonna type in a quarter so that I've got the answer on my screen there. So now my last answer on my screen is a quarter, I can just reuse my answer button. So I've got one minus, and I'm just gonna type in answer cubed, and then divide it by four. So fraction button, one minus answer cubed, so power of three, all over four and press equals. You don't get a very nice number here either, you get a fraction which is 63 over 256. But again, you might have written the decimal here and the decimal for this was 0.246093375. And obviously you can just take note of the fact that the solutions we're getting are between zero and one. As in that first part of the question, it says show that there's a solution between zero and one. Well, both of these solutions so far are between zero and one. And actually, if we just keep pressing equals, we would eventually actually get to the solution or very, very close to it anyway. Okay, so that is iteration, what it's used for to help find the estimates to the solution, how you go about reading those um, subscripts there, the n plus one and the little n with the x's, what they mean, how to use them. So again, if you found that useful, obviously please like, please comment, please subscribe and I will see you on the next video. Thank you.